This is what I'm going to be doing. This is my benchmark here. How many of us have those brunette clients that want fun color but just feel like all they could get is bleach and tone? Right? right on. Okay, my family, thank you for raising your hand. Um, <laughs> I'm going to need your guys' participation. Any of you tired? Imagine what time we started. Just saying, so I need a little of your energy. That being said, this is for those brunette clients that want something, but they don't want like a bleach and tone situation for it. So all we're doing is coloring on the surface of the hair. The, surf, the hair has a surface like the shell, and then it has the interior work that we're doing. All of this work was above the round of the head. We know that when we color above the round of the head, hair color moves side to side. Everything we color below the round of the head, the parietal ridge just collapses. So all of this was above the round of the head, in a rectangle section, no wider than my peace sign, so that we could anchor narrow, but release wide with our color. And it's a very simple application using the idea of over direction. Yes. Yeah, Ooh, so I'm over. gonna get started and I'll catch y'all up later. Right on. Is it my turn or are we going to Lori? Me? Me? No, me? you go, me. girl. Yeah. Oh yeah, in order, that's right. Okay, <laughs> here's my pretty girl. You guys like this Phoenix, like, curtain, curtain bang situation? Who's into curtain bangs right now? I'm slightly obsessed. There for a while, I was screwing up and calling them carpet bangs. That's a different situation. <laughs> Whoa. Right? Yes. So I'm going to, yeah, let's <laughs> move on. Move on quickly from that. So I'm going to use That's some fun, city Debbie. beats today to kind of emulate what a balayage would look like, but with fashion color shades. So uh, we, uh, why I mentioned the curtain bangs, almost said carpet again, but <laughs> you need to know if you're going to cut a substantial amount of hair off around the face before you do any sort of balayage work. Who early on in their career, they colored first and did all this beautiful lightning and then they're like, I want fringe. And then you're like, oh crap, I just did all that work for nothing. So that sucks. So I definitely want to frame out what I'm going to do with the haircut and this is what I'm going to do on my mannequin. So yes, I'll pass it to Cassandra. Hi guys, I'm super excited to be here and I'm gonna share with you one of my favorite go-to foil placements in the salon. And I've recently been like super inspired by basically all things 90s, including the Spice Girls. Monkeys? Um, yes, Whoa, which I- Oh, spicy. Yeah. Hey, monkeys? Spice Girls. No, before that. 90s. Oh, I thought monkeys. I'm like, I like those too. Yeah. <laughs> no, 90s. Who doesn't? Yeah, um, so we're gonna actually work with a, uh, a circular section right around the hairline. And we're gonna go on with a heavy blonde section. So think 90s face frame, but upgraded, brought into 2019. Um, so I do this a lot with baby lights. You guys feel like you're doing millions and millions of foils in the salon just to get those really blended blonde looks. So I use a technique called strategic foiling that's based off of using the round of the head. It lets you work a lot more efficiently with your foil placements. You work at about a third of the foil um, that you would normally do in a foil placement. So I'm gonna do a front hairline section using a bricklay pattern. And what we're gonna get is a really nice, strong face frame. And basically, I did the entire circle of her hairline and only about 10 foils in the rest of her hair. So it gives a nice blended end result, but it gives a little bit more of a bolder statement with that. So that's what we're gonna be working on today. Woo! Woo! That group likes you over there. Mm -mm. I'm super excited to be with you guys. You too. And these guys too. I'm very yeah. excited to be with these guys, right? This is so fun. So um, I'm, we're gonna start with a, uh, a color technique that I'm, I'm working with um, a lot of movement within the hair, but changing up my sections. I always think that if I've done something before, I've been really into something, I have to do something completely any different, right? So I think like we've been doing, I've been doing a lot of curved sections or triangles lately. So now I had to do squares because I haven't done that, right? So just changing this up, I'm gonna do uh, some square sections. We went through and uh, did our benchmark mannequin, so you'll see some black in there. She's got a green base. You'll see some gray and some yellow, depending on how she wears that fi fringe. What kind of fringe again, Rebecca? Uh, carpet? <laughs> curtain. Yeah, curtain, curtain, this, curtain. this is like full-on drapery. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, like it's like closed go. night lines there. All yeah. right, so let me section this off. We'll get started, and I'll get back to you. Good job, Lori. Yes. All right, so I'm going in. I've started taking my first section. I talked to you about the idea that I'm going in and I'm using over direction. So think about it. When we use over direction with things, right, when we're doing over direction with color, we're bringing something to one area, but it's obviously going to go back to its home, right? When we use elevation, 
in hair color, we generally get softness, right? If we elevate a section, lighten it, or do something, when it drops back, just the principle of that is generally going to be softer with what we're doing. Well, what I'm doing is I'm working on the top of the head, and I'm over-directing everything to the back. Always, my application is going to always be the same. I'm just repetitive with what I'm doing. I have three different colors that I'm using. I'm using our city beads, so visually you could see this. And if I do this on a brunette client, that I want it to stay more like a month, and I want it to look more like um, an oil slick or something like that, like you see on this head, I'm going to choose city beads because it's just topical. It's only going to last about 10 to 12 shampoos. It's like conditioner with color. It's like a gateway drug into hair color. Mm -hmm. Truly. Right? And the reality is I want to get you off the gateway drug and get you <laughs> chemically dependent on it. <laughs> Right? That's the, the reality. Stuff. Gray hairs, blonde hairs, everything you need. I'll bond you up, but we're going to get you. Right? That's the reality. I want everybody to become a client of ours, and we want long dollars, right? We don't want just money today for one service. I want to take out money from your ATM for the next 10 to foreseeably 18 mm. years. Chemically dependent. Yeah. I want everybody to be Real chemically talk. dependent on us, Haley. That's the reality of it, right? So I'm using three colors. I'm using an orange, a red, and a green. Right, and I'm just putting it on the surface. Because I'm not using them full strength, I start with my clear first, start with white. Rebecca talks about this a lot. Mm -hmm. Start with white and add your color. It's easier than diluting full strength, right? So I have what I get and I'm just painting it on the surface. Hot tip I wanna give you, and I'm gonna pass it is, when I go in and place my color, I wanna make sure originally, my friends, that I'm pinching from top and bottom. You could throw up deuces or you could do your fingers, whatever you desire, and you want to just keep it flat, because the goal is to keep all the fingers together, not jumbled on top of each other. Everybody with me? Josh, you with me? All right, cool. Mm. So that being said, I want to pinch from top and bottom, because it's going to lay it really flat. Last thing is, when I go in and apply this color, if you're a board user, raise your hand. Like you use boards when you color. I can't. Couple. Like it's one more thing. I'm Latin left-handed in Aquarius. <laughs> I got a lot. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do it. So I get a good amount of color on here. I go in, I use my hand, but notice I'm using the extension of my arm, not just my hand and my fingers. I go in and I tap that color in. I'm leaving a little space in between my color. I stress this again, I'm leaving a little space between my color. If my colors touch, there's nothing wrong with it, but what that means is the shell is unbreakable. You with me? It's all connected. By leaving a little space in between, I get a little sunlight on that cloudy day. Everybody with me? So it makes it softer, it makes it a little more natural for what I'm doing with it, and it's not all just one color. It breaks it up so it looks a little more believable. It's almost like a little low light or a little natural within what's happening. Right I'm Justin on. Isaac, I approve this message, Rebecca Taylor. I approve it too, right on. So I'm like, I'm just like fully enthralled with what I'm doing with the shadow root right here. I know it's not like miraculous, the shadow root, but typically you guys know that you tend to keep the majority of the lightness in the front. And then as you go back, you're adding more depth. And then the majority of the depth taps and happens back here. You're emulating what the sun would do. So obviously the surface of the hair would be brighter and lighter because of the sun. So what I'm doing is just, just knocking out this very tedious shadow root, um, doing it the way I said, leaving all the blonde here. And then when it comes back to my rotation, I'm going to start mixing in different shades. This is my root color. This is my shade, the darkest one. This is the red, and I'm horrible with the names, but a dot of the new black, which is really cool because you can customize the city beats with clear, all the other shades, black, all that good stuff. And I also have, just for giggles, I'm really trying hard to censor myself for this, and, and I'm really bad on stage typically, but I used a uh, chartreuse color. So amidst all these yellows and oranges and reds, I'm going to incorporate green as a contrast and have it not look like messy Christmas. If I can, if I can, I know I can do it because it's back there. Yeah. Hey, you haven't oh, yeah. lived till you've had a messy Christmas, girl. Messy Christmas. <laughs> It was a messy Christmas. Okay, so I'll pass it over, and then we'll get to the fun stuff next rotation. That's awfully close. That's awfully close. Okay. Uh, I love it. Um, <laughs> so you can see the foil, <laughs> the foil placement starting to evolve into the bricklay pattern, and what we're seeing here is the spread of the foils that we're getting from the strategic placement. Um, and what I love about this is that it eliminates a couple major things that we face in the salon. Have you ever done the fullest foil in the front of the hair? and then you blow dry it and you end up with like one tiny dark spot right at the recession or right across the part line. Like you just needed like one more weave to finish it. By shifting your foil placement and just getting them to overlap each other, so you can see here on the screens, there is no stop and start because wherever there is a space between the foils, there's something else overlapping it. 
So it makes sure that there is no gaps, no dark spots. These side foils here, going in with your first horizontal foil at the hairline, and then shifting them to the side, takes care of those recession pieces. So it makes sure that you have no dark spot left behind. And then it also allows your guests to part wherever they want and still have that even distribution of light. So it's a really great way to utilize the head shape to your advantage. And we're basically just working with all the hair that falls forward. And you can see our sectioning, this triangular section. This hair falls more on a flat plane, so we're foiling the hair where it lives. That's part of why it's called strategic foiling, because there's a strategy to it. And then we're weaving about an 80% weave here, and then we're leaving about 20% of the hair out to get maximum impact of brightness. So what I like to do is when I'm moving to my bricklay pattern, I'll take my horizontal foil and just create a little mark right in the center, and then I'll divide the hair in half, so I'm not trying to section that whole section, and then I'll go get my section in there like this, clip this out of the way, and what you see here with this section is that it actually falls right in between the space of those two previous foils. So if you look right in this, uh, right here, see where those two foils meet right here? This entire section falls right there. So again, you're getting that beautiful spread of the blonde. So I'm gonna keep weaving away, and you can also slice these sections again for bolder impact, um, or you can tease. So you can choose any uh, technique that you want with this. Right on. Right. I like to watch her foil, she's such, so good at it. Yeah. I like awesome, to just watch awesome. her. What's that? I like to just watch her. You like to he just does. watch her? Like That's on a creepy. stakeout, you know what I mean? <laughs> just post up outside her house and just watch her. Nobody knows that insider joke, so you just look real creepy. <laughs> real Surveillance, creepy. right? Yeah. yeah. Let's just say it had to do with a surprise or conference call that turned into a surprise FaceTime call yeah. that none of us were prepared for. That was funny. <laughs> it was awesome. I'm feeling like. They're stalkers or something he is, yeah? No? Hello. All right, so Stop here, let's talk about our square section. So we're going to take our square section, right, we're, we colored the base color at the back. Now let's talk about this base color. Many times when we do gray or we want to have this kind of coolish tone first, right, we need to, what do I call it again, Cassandra? Pre-tone. Pre-tone, thank you. The toner need before to pre -tone, the toner, yeah. Right, so when you need to pre-tone, how many of you have done a gray color recently? Say, oh yeah. Yeah. Right, so you do a gray um, color, but you do it once and then they come back in a couple weeks and they're like, it looks brassy, right? The gray doesn't last, right? So you need to pre-tone. So in order to use our, we used our Shades EQ Silver Green, okay, Shades EQ Gloss Silver Green, but we pre-toned it with 09T first so that it was had that real grayish tone. Then you put the green over top of it, okay? So we use the silver green over top of it and we get that real silvery, ashy tint. So if you're trying to get that tone and you're not quite getting it, pre-tone it first. All right, so now we've gone through, we've colored the back area of our mannequin head, okay? And then I've taken a square off of that. So our square, and that's our base color. Let's look here. Oh, here we go. Thank you for that. You're awesome. All right, so we take our, our base color and that's our first square. Then off of that, we take a, I gotta make sure I'm going the right way. I always go the wrong way. All right, it's a left-handed thing. All right, so here uh, we go. So, right, Jay? That's right. So we're gonna take a slice just off of our square um, horizontally and then across the top of the head. The next one, that was a gray one. The next one, we're gonna take a yellow one going on the other side and across the front. Then we're gonna take one last one, which will be our black on the other side and across the front again. The rest of this, of course, is gonna be the base color. We do that so that depending on which way you move it, you have either more yellow one way or more black the other way. We wanna put the gray right in the surface area so it plays with that green. Remember, the dominant color is gonna show up. If I put the black on the top, we wouldn't see anything else, right? So let me continue on with this and we'll catch you up where we are in a bit. I love what you said, Lori, about the idea of toning it first, because especially right now, right, with pastel colors and all these soft colors that people want, sometimes we're like, as they're walking out the salon, I'm like, well, you really, peach pastel is hotter. 
peach pastel is a lot better than pink pastel. I'm just saying, like, pink was, like, last season. Have you been to Europe lately? Because peach is really in. What color am I now? <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm like, I'm just joking. Uh, okay. I'm just saying that when we have too much yellow in the hair, if we want pink, it comes out peach, my friends, right? So to Lori's point, clean that canvas, right? Especially these silver colors, this and that, right? Sometimes even if it's inside a banana yellow, right, that we have, it seems like a little bit of yellow, but when you want to get those white colors, those champagne, those real beiges, it's enough yellow that it doesn't let you go to those places with what you're doing. So I firmly believe in that. So I'm going in, doing my same things that I'm doing here. Could I get everybody's pinky up? Like, I don't know, you guys got scouts here or something? Because what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna pass this around. Fair enough, okay, I'm gonna pass it around because I want you to keep me honest. I want you to be able to get a closer look at it, okay? But I want you to look at it is that everything underneath is not done. As I said, it's just that rectangle, no wider than my peace sign, front and back. And all that I'm thinking about is how much visual weight do I need back here so when I hold my hand, Lori, I see the color and not my hand. Does that make sense? Right, because I need enough visual weight. Visual what? Wait. And that's a graffiti term. When people are graffitiing on a wall, it's about do I just spray my name one time or do I do it two times for better saturation? Do I outline it with black? Do I outline it with white so that you'll see it? So when we're doing hair color, I think about how many lines do I want? How much visual weight do I need? Because if I can't see my hand, chances are I can't see the underneath color. Sometimes that's my friend, sometimes it's not, depending on what we're doing. So I'm gonna pass this around. Scouts honor, Girl Scouts honor, girl power, boy power. He raised his Takati, all that power. Yeah? All right, cool people mm -mm. too, tough crowd. Okay. Thank you. Right on. Is it? Thank you, Sensei. Sensei okay. Though. So, when I got started on this particular color melt, I want to focus on the front first. If you guys can see the way I'm approaching it, I'm a little here, a little there, a little backwards, a little whatever. I'm very organic in the way I color. It's however it feels, whatever feels good. So, this side, I used a little mesh to throw it over that way to use gravity to work for me. But around the front, you guys can see that's where I have the majority of the lightness because I want a money piece, but using fashion color. So, I'm just going to continue with different applications of the different colors. Colors, and I'm taking my shadow root or my red or my darkest base and every little section has a varying degree of how far it's going to come down because if everything's the same even if you feather if everything is the same every section you take you're going to get a visual weight line so you're not going to get that really smooth gradient so this section you guys see me I'm taking my red about about I don't know maybe a third of the way and by the way if you happen to have messy gloves and you're wiping your gloves and you try to be you know, tidy. It just doesn't happen sometimes. It's not the end of the world, especially if you're working in the same tonal family. I've got a few little spots of red right there. Take you some orange. I didn't even wipe my gloves. I'm good to go. And Bob you Rod. got a buddy right next to you? You're you just that's like, even what? better. I mean, but usually I don't have a buddy, <laughs> but since I do, let me utilize. You always have a buddy. You just you? might not see him at the moment. That's weird also. <laughs> Okay. Is that like a ghost buddy? <laughs> a ghost buddy? I don't know. Thank you, buddy. Don't judge. I, I'm not judging. I never judge. Okay, so the last section on this one, and I took the red down, like I said, about a third of the way. Um, I've cleaned, I was able to clean my gloves because of my buddy, so I'm going to switch over to this chartreuse green color, and it's not a big deal that I'm mixing it with an orange because actually the yellow is dominating in the orange and the chartreuse green, so there's no funky color that's going to happen. You just get like these really pretty tropical tones. So that was one section. I'm going to flip this over here, no harm in that. And then my next section, I'll bring down my red a little bit farther because I think of it in terms as ma of makeup. So you guys do your contour, right? So that is the, the depth that you see. If you use a darker color here, that's the depth, and it's going to make the lighter colors pop. So think of it in terms as makeup. And then just the rest of it, just go through and vibe and have fun and just think darker in the back, lighter in the front. I'm emulating, I'm about to throw my, my girl down on the ground. I'm emulating what the, the sun would do anyway. And I'm emulating a natural technique using fashion color. So that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just keep doing it, do what feels right, and uh, be very organic with it and not stress out because fashion color is fun. You don't wanna stress out, you know? The, the thing you have to worry about is are you at the appropriate level? And if you, oh, my lady, I'm like seeing friends I know. I'm like, I'm sorry, I have no internal dialogue. So when I see folks, I'm like, oh, you too, okay. But anyway, you have to make sure you're at the appropriate level 
and do it in a way that maintains the health of the hair. Because if you get to a level nine and it's crappy and it's stretchy and it's falling off, this color won't last and it's gonna look like garbage. So make sure you get to the appropriate level, know what you're working with with your canvas, and the rest is fun. Don't overthink it, have fun, get that reference picture. But for the rest of it, if you have a reference picture, you don't wanna duplicate it. You want something specific for that client and just go nuts and especially get models. I know not everybody is gonna have that vivid or that fashion color clientele that you may want. Do a model for free, put that on your Instagram. They'll know you know how to do it. Then you'll get more and then you'll get more people that will pay you and then so on and so forth and you can build that kind of clientele. So I'm just gonna continue farting around like I'm doing, having fun, because it's supposed to feel good. I'm gonna pass it to Cassandra over there. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. I love you. I love you. Aw, we're so bonding. I'm actually almost done with, <laughs> with this uh, front foil section. And you can see how it starts to turn into a headband right around the face. And you can see how it's hugging the head shape. So it gives you a really neat, clean application, but it also gives you that full spread of brightness. And one thing I want to talk about, when they were talking about toners, do you guys know what's coming out in August? Woo! Yeah. Right? Level 10 Shades EQ. Okay. You ask and Redkin listens. And as a colorist, I am so stoked to have something that's calibrated specifically at that level. So we've got 10N, 10 10VV. It's and about so, time, Redkin. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I love it, though. It's, so it's really exciting. I've got to play with them. And they're beautiful for creating those kind of beigey tones at the level 10 and pearly. Um, but they're a perfect combination for something like this because you can shadow it down just a little bit, even if you have a higher contrast, and then get that perfect level 10 right at the end. So here is the finished front foil placement. You can see the stagger to it. And now what I'm going to do is one of my favorite techniques to add a little depth next to my lightness is to go in either with color gels or shades EQ and actually stagger a low light up and down in between the foils. And what that means is I'll hit the root, I'll pull some of them down about 20 25%, some of them down a little bit lower, and then some of them down almost to the end. And that gives a really, really natural up and down and a perfect blend to that front hairline. Because without the depth, we can't see the light. And so if we really want to make that money piece pop, we need to add a little depth either to it or next to it. So I'm going to go in and add my depth now, but here is the finished front foil placement. Awesome. Woo! Woohoo! All right, so here's a couple of hot tips for you. So first of all, let's, let's just do this. So we've got our first section in a square. Now I've taken a section right around on one side and in the front of that square. Then we go through and we do it again. We go along the side and in the front of that section. And then for a third time, we do the same, same thing. So we're kind of just wrapping it up all on just one side um, and in the front as we go along. That way, as we move our model's hair, let's show in here since you're so nice right up here. We, when we move the hair around, we can see the gray or the base color. You can see a bit of the gray and you can see the, the dark, the black. And then if you move it this way, you see it more of the gray and the yellow and then you see the black underneath. Now, here's a hot tip coming at you. If you do black inside a hair color situation like this, you want to use permanent color because when you rinse it, it will not rinse through the rest of the hair. So make sure you're using permanent color for that because otherwise you rinse it and sometimes you get that like, uh-oh, at the basin, right? Where you get it muddy. So you want to use a permanent color. So it's just something like a 1AB with a 10 volume, say chromatics, right? Or your color fusion, color gels, uh, lacquers, that kind of thing. So that's your first hot tip. The next one is, as you're placing your color, put your color on your foil first. So uh, apply your color to your foil and then take your section and adhere it to the foil and it stays a lot easier and you get a nice even. When you're going blonde, it's a great way to do it as well. Put your lightener on your foil and then on the top of your section as well. Then you sandwich it in that product so it gets better, better saturation, all right? Are you guys learning something this afternoon? Mm-hmm. That must not be enough. We're gonna have to go another hour or something. Are you guys learning something this afternoon? Awesome, all right. So, you know, my big thing is, you know, make sure you're picking the right color for the right um, 
choice for whatever you're, you're working on, okay? Thinking about rinsing, thinking about what your tone is. Do you need to pre-tone first, all right? And then just really change up how it is that you're doing your sections. If you always do it one way, maybe try doing it a different way. We hope we've given you some of that. Yeah. Try it a different way if you need to. Speaking about that, we talked about the 10 series coming out, Lori, Cassandra, mm -hmm. and Rebecca. We didn't tell them about the new Color Fusion Super Glows super that are coming glows, out. Yes. And that's something that is made, again, like this technique that I'm doing. It's made for those levels three, four, and five, darker levels that want some reflex and they want some action, some fashion colors without a bleach and tone. They're not looking for that rawness. They're looking for something a little more chic with a little more reflection to it with that. But we have four new colors that are coming out. There's a garnet, a tequila sunrise, an icy violet, and a blue. Right, sea and they glass. give you beautiful colors, but yeah. they're not, as I said, a traditional type of bleach and tone for it. And that's exciting that's coming out later this year, yeah? Yes. Yes. Well, I'm going in, and the last thing I want to give you, I'm finishing up this last section, because the reality is, is I sometimes run out of time when I'm doing this hair color, and that's okay, because the reality, you've already learned what you need to learn. Would you agree? It's the same repetitive thing. The last thing I'd say for those of you that are looking at it and going, I wish it could be a little blended, it's okay. You pull out your little friend, your DJ friend, and all you do is you go right here between the colors, and you just go, wicka, wicka, what, wicka, what, wicka, wicka, what, wicka, wicka, what. Just watch your fingers, yes? Because the reality is I could do the orange to the red. I don't want to do that with the blue. So I need a different finger to wicka wicka what wicka what wicka wicka what that so if you want it to be more of a melt Josh more of a blend something a smooth transition like you're used to with an ombre go ahead and do that or you could use one of our edging brushes or one of our um, blur brushes would also if you don't have a DJ finger like me but I think if you look inside you probably all do. Hmm. <laughs> and come see us at the Redkin Exchange. Impact your life. It's a tax write-off too. Come visit us, hang out with us for three or four days and impact your career, change your life. Be that percentage of hairdresser that really gives a damn. Exactly. It's gonna be awesome. Thank You're you, awesome. Justin. Thank you. All right, well, I'm, I'm pretty much wrapping it up. Like I said, it was a feel-good project. I just kept going. One little last little trick I'll leave you with. So let's say you have, you have a section where you don't want it to be a really smooth gradient from the top darkest color to the mid to the lightest color. So once you have your darkest base color on, go with your color you're going to use for the end. So in this case, I want to use that like chartreuse green. And I've wiped my gloves off pretty good, I'd say. And so I'm going to get that fully, fully saturated. And a lot of times, hair is like a sponge. You know, if you put a sponge on a puddle of water, a dry sponge, it can only soak up so much. So same with the hair. I mean, that's why I can kind of fold this over top of each other and it can sit on each other and it's not going to transfer or bleed. So I've got my situation with the base color and the end color, but nothing's going on with the mid. But I know the ends are going to be that super saturated green. So then I'll go in with my mid color, which is kind of like that conduit that's going to blend the red with the green with my yellow. And like he said, a little bit of wicka wicka wow wicka wa, whatever he said. That's what. <laughs> I can't do it quite as good as he did, but definitely. Awesome. get in there and blend it with your fingers you can blend too much so when you start seeing it go milky white kind of frothy stop get more color go in because what's happening is that the pigment separating from the suspension and then it's you're basically pushing it out of the hair so that's my little pro tip or two and what I would do for the rest of this is either do the majority red because I want depth to come from underneath or maybe a few more tips of the lighter colors to have it look like Again, my broad behind me. So I'm gonna finish up. I'm gonna rinse with really cold water, not shampoo, and use a nice color safe conditioner, call it a day. Another big tip, blow dry immediately because if you turban or towel or clip it when it's wet, it can still transfer or bleed and the red can bleed onto those yellow or those like chartreuse green ends. So blow dry immediately if you can. So those are my pro tips. I love your pro tips. I love nice. I love your pro tips. <laughs> this is like Love Fest Central. Yes. I want to like say mean stuff now because it's too much. <laughs> to counteract. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love you. So okay. this is <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. This is uh, the finished application. I just want to give you a quick t quick tip about applying color actually in between the foils. Um, what I love to use, and I like to do it in between the foils because it gives you some control of where you're placing. What? The depth, but I love using the Color Gels lacquers. We've got the new NNs coming out. So this is actually 7NN and 10 volume that I'm using. 
but the consistency of the color gels lacquers gives you the same blendability that they're talking about, and I actually do something very similar. I will get a little bit higher saturation on the root, and then instead of applying more color, I'll, eat, I'll slightly comb it through, but then I'll just work it down with my hands, and that gives you a heavy saturation to a light saturation, and just by shifting your saturation, you get an immediate blend, and if the hair is blended, within your very first step, it's just gonna get more blended. So we're not always relying on our toners to create the blend. And then I'll do the little, I think, what'd you call it, the DJ finger? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wicker, wicker. A little uh, yeah. of a little blending right at the top like that. So you're not looking for super, super heavy saturation. It just gives that nice blend to it. And then you get your foil back down, and then this is that finished front application. Pretty. Woo